I'm most proud of you for overcoming being a single mother with a child who had cancer. Good. Mommy. What's up, guys? King family. Hi. You're so <laughs> Yo, guys, she is so beautiful. Lord, why are you so cute? Okay, guys, so many of you have probably heard of it, but it's the famous red box. It's called We're Not Really Strangers. And basically, it's just like testing like how well we know each other. It comes with three sets of levels. This should be like lighthearted and fun, though. What assumption did you make about me that turned out to be right? That you was bougie and high maintenance. <laughs> really? Not loving and nurturing and so sweet and all those things. You chose that one. No. First thing that came to mind. No, that's good. That's good. I. That's okay. What about me first stood out to you <clears throat> physically? I love your your height and your body. Like had like these sexy thick legs. It was just your your whole look. I just thought you were super sexy. It was the whole thing, babe. I'm okay, sorry. Okay. Well. What was I wearing on our first date? All right, you were wearing a nice pink shirt with some light blue jeans and sandals if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, breakfast. Breakfast was our first date. I was thinking of when we went out to dinner the next night. Where was that at again? What was that place called that I love? Sparkling. The Sparklings, yes. All you local Vegas people. Good job, babe. Wow, You're that's welcome. impressive. See? How would you describe our first <laughs> date in one word? Amazing. Okay. Did you ever stalk my social media before we met? If so, what stood out? We've already talked about this. I think we all, at this point, stalk people that we're interested in social media. I mean, I think that's what it's all about, right? Yeah, it can, right? be, it can be bad too, but... So, of course, yes. The thing that stood out to me was obviously your beauty. <laughs> How important do you feel physical affection is for me? Explain. Oh God. I definitely think it's important for you. I know that it means something. Of course, everyone wants to be loved and feel loved and have the affection. He's very loving guys, very affectionate, always like, touching me, hugging me, kissing me, everything you could ever want. But then I think like between us, I'm definitely more that person. So I think because of how you are, that I'm overly affectionate, I think that you like that because you might need that in the opposites attract realm. Okay. Right? The, yeah. <laughs> I agree. How important do you think gifts are to me? Explain. I think gifts are very important to you. You are a sentimental type of woman, so you love gifts and cards. And I mean, come on, what you woman know, please, don't want please, gifts? No like, gifts for me. Like, let's be real. What do you think I'd like to do more often with you? We do this often, but definitely the first thing that comes to my mind is like building together, you know, investing in our future, something to do with goals and the future. Definitely that. Okay, that's very good. I'm very much goal oriented. Perfect. <laughs> Between the two of us, who's most likely to make us late for an event? You. That's not true. Really? Yes, ask the kids. No, ask no, the no, kids. No. The girls have to do their makeup, do their hair, change their outfit 20, 30, 40, 50, Babe, 60 times. I was like that in my younger days for sure. It used to take me hours to blow dry my hair, do my makeup. It was insane. It was ridiculous. But you know that half the time I leave the house without any makeup on. So Are stop. you kidding me? You literally change your outfit 20 times. That's you. Oh my God, does this look good? That's oh no. You are okay, straight let's just, cat. Look, no, let's just, no. best friend. Come on, best friend. No. Let's pound it out. We're the same. No. It's both of us. I can throw on sweats. I've been hoodie. ready, like wearing whatever, and you've changed like 20 times, and then you iron three shirts, and then you go back to something else. Well, how often do I do that? No, I don't. That's straight cat. Okay, where are we going then, I guess? Oh. Where, are we going out or are we just going to like coffee shop really quick? Because we'll just throw on whatever. I'm standing firm <laughs> with my answer. You will make us late. Level two. In what ways is this relationship unlike any other before? 
It's definitely unlike any other before because David is just like the man that I always prayed for, the man that I always wanted, and he's a real man. Like he's devoted, committed, faithful, literally. He's like the best guy, he's the best father. I mean, he's not without flaws, of course, but he's pretty amazing. So you definitely surpass all the relationships I've ever had before. <laughs> not the lip. Oh, give me a kiss. What's the one way that our relationship has gotten better over time? Because with time comes trust, openness, vulnerability, loyalty. It's brought us closer, you know? Over time, people reveal, you know, who they are. What's something we used to do at the beginning of our relationship that you missed the most? We're so good about staying true. Like, we still do the same things, to be honest. We definitely went out a little bit more. It wasn't a pandemic. Yeah, I was just gonna say that I was gonna defend it, because for sure, it's been it's been weird. Like, and we're not like out there like that, so pretty much my choice, so yeah. I was gonna say talk for hours, we still do that. Talk about goals in the future, we still do that. Watch our shows, we still do that. We still go to the coffee shop. We still do all the cute little things. We still get each other cards and say loving things. It's only gotten better, to be honest. How have I changed you for the better? Mm. Mm, that's a good one. Why am I like getting emotional? We haven't even said anything. Oh my god. No, huh. I'm fine. She's gonna be crying through this whole video. Uh -oh. <laughs> Not at all. This has been pretty lighthearted. I think you've made me um, softer. Like, you know, I have to be a little bit more sensitive, more patient, understanding. She gives me life because she's so vibrant. Sometimes I can be secluded or antisocial, and she can, you know, open me up a bit to make me live a little, see the world. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Sometimes I can zone in on something and forget about everything. Everything, but she knows how to pull me back sometimes. It might be difficult, but she can pull me back in. <laughs> it's very difficult to pull you back in. How has your definition of love changed over time? if at all. I always knew what love was and how to love. I just don't think I really experienced it in the right ways. So I can say that it's changed because I've been able to see what it really is. You know, like you've shown me real love. And like, oh my God, don't look at me like that. You've shown me real love and like what love is supposed to be. It doesn't always have to be dysfunctional. You know what I mean? Mm. Real love. I'm searching for a real love. Thank you for giving that. <laughs> What's the sexiest thing I do without realizing it? Oh, that's easy. The sexiest thing you do oh, it is? Oh. is smile. Like, have you guys seen that freaking Thank smile? You. Look at it. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Good. Thank you. Show them that smile. Mm, that smile is fire. We never want to stop hearing those things, right? How does our age difference or lack thereof affect us, if at all? Wow. If at all. Okay, D. It doesn't. <laughs> No, I don't I don't think it affects us. I think normally like I've never really dated anyone younger than me. It's usually like a year or two older, right? But older men are not necessarily better or more mature or where you want them to be. It just depends on the man. He's a little bit younger, but I don't feel like that at all. I always feel like you're such a man, like you are a leader in every way. So like there's nothing about me that ever feels like you're younger than me. Plus you look older as well. Ah! I always mess with him and say that. What recent experience made you feel closer to me? Mm. All right, guys, this is fairly easy because guess what? Coronavirus! <laughs> we had a lot of time to talk. We were pretty much with each other all day, every day. So yeah. I think we got real close during that time. Look, we even started this channel yeah, that's during true. that time, you know? So Brainstorming, a lot goal of planning, setting, future yeah. plans. Yeah. Trying to maneuver differently in the world. So yeah, that experience definitely brought us together because it was very difficult. And when you go through difficult times and you overcome those times together, it can only make you closer. Yeah. Aww. What did you learn to not take personally with me? You know, he really, really likes his alone time. He's very much like a loner in his own way in a good regard. Like he needs that time to like decompress where I am like kind of opposite, you know? Like I think it's good for us all to have our alone time with our friends. We all need alone time. We all need to be happy. 
by ourselves first and all of that holds true like completely it's something i definitely know now like what that means to him but it's just how he like processes things and recharges and just because i need my space and my time to decompress does not mean that you know i don't love you i don't want to be around you i just need some time to myself i need to think you know what i'm saying oh how do i show that i love you without telling you you know, you show me you love me without telling me by being selfless. Like everyone comes before you, you're always thinking about others. In this case, I'm going to say me, the question is directed to me, <laughs> right? You're always thoughtful, right? You know, if, whether it's you bringing me something to eat or something to drink or asking me if I need anything, you know, making sure that our house is in order and our kids are good. So yeah, all those little things. Thank you. You're welcome, my love. I love doing those things. What have I helped you appreciate about yourself? Oh, wow. So many things, to be honest. My beauty, like naturally. He's really, really good about making me feel really good about myself in every way, really, not just my looks. Whenever I doubt myself, I tend to be really hard on myself and I'm a perfectionist just like you, but I'm definitely more hard on myself. Like if I cook something and it didn't come out perfectly, I'm like, oh, this didn't come out right and this doesn't taste how I wanted it to. And he's like, no, 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 don't do that. Definitely like you don't need this done. You don't need that done. You don't need Botox. And he's always just reassuring me that like I don't need it. How beautiful I am. How beautiful I look without makeup. Or he'll just say like, wow, your skin looks so amazing today. And I just like woke up. He always does stuff like that. He always reassures me that I don't need a filter. I don't need anything to be beautiful and that I can do anything when it comes to whatever. Because you are, you're so good at so many things. Everything that you do it's really amazing even i do it sometimes and you like you self-doubt but yeah. i'm always keep it real with you and i'm gonna tell you right now you fire so <laughs> you ain't got nothing to worry about Thank you know you, what i'm saying baby. all right guys it's level three what part of my heart do you wish you could heal i wish i could heal some of that childhood hurt we carry a lot of the pain and damage from our childhood so i would want to heal some of those hurts and past traumas if i could mm. What's one thing you'll do differently during our next argument? One thing I can do differently during our next argument is definitely not to keep it going. <laughs> oh. I mean, sometimes I'm definitely like, okay, no problem. I don't want to argue, babe. And then there's times where like, I don't feel understood or heard. I feel like he might be apologizing to just kind of move on, which isn't always a bad thing. But if it's something that I feel strongly about or something that I feel like could reoccur, I want to make sure that it's understood so that we learn each other. We know each other's love languages and we grow from there. So sometimes keeping it going is okay, but going and going and going can be... Going and going and going and going. What's that, Duracell? Sometimes you just gotta let it go. Yeah, but David, like I said earlier, tends to be like a wrap it up. We need to talk about this for five minutes. And I'm just like, no, we need to talk about this longer. And no, we it, need to really understand each other, no matter how long it takes. It doesn't have to be five minutes, but it doesn't have to be three hours. It never has know? to be three hours, but. We talk about it and then we come up with the solution and we move on. We don't need to talk about it and then talk about it some more and then we fixed it and then come back to it later and talk about it some more and then keep talking about it. <laughs> that's a little exhausting, but you know, that's just me. It's only know. like, I can understand how that is, is annoying and whatever, but we want to make sure that things aren't happening continuously on both ends. And we just want to feel like heard and understood. I get it. I understand. So noted. Like he's already trying to wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you see? <laughs> Finish the sentence. Thank you for accepting blank about me. Thank you for accepting everything about me. Mm. What's a superpower of mine that perhaps I'm unaware of? There's a lot actually, but the first thing that comes to mind would be you definitely have the power to push people to be their best. You do that for everyone in this house, you know, and I'm sure people that know you outside of this house, you truly love in the best way. You want people to be the best version of themselves. And that's so selfless, you know, that's really what everyone needs and would want. So that's definitely a superpower of yours because people will always be their best, do their best, fulfill their most potential when they have you in their life and that's like that's a superpower in itself some people are in someone's life for their own selfish reasons and that's completely opposite of you hmm. 
Oh, she's so sweet. It's just true. Like, seriously, that's wow. really true. I'm proudest of you for... I'm most proud of you for overcoming being a single mother with a child who had cancer. I will say that that is a very difficult situation. And for you to have gone through that and overcame that, that's the proudest moment for me, I would say. To raise a kid with cancer on your own. She's bringing your juice. No, no. She's bringing it, okay? No, that one. No, that one's old. That one's old. No, it's not old. She's bringing your juice. I couldn't wish that on anyone. That's very admirable. I do not know how she did it, you know, so. I don't either. It was just God, honestly, God. <laughs> What could other couples learn from us? You know, love is definitely hard work. It takes understanding and true commitment. Like, you know, they could learn from us how family oriented we are, how much these four walls are everything to us. We don't really let anything get in the way of our love or our goals. Number one, we truly lead with God. That's the foundation always, you know? And with God, like he guides you for the rest. So what's one thing you'd never change about our relationship? I would never change the fact that we, you know, can talk about anything. I think communication is key in any relationship. And if you don't have communication, then what do you have? We communicate on so many different levels. You know, to be honest, you've helped me with that. As our communication has gotten better, it draws us closer. If you listen and, and if you communicate to understand. Yeah, you know, listen to understand. Listen that's really to key. understand. So yeah, that's one thing I would never want to change.